Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Today I'm going to talk about a whole system approach to health and health care planning in uh, the Sudan. I am going to cover first the definition of health. What do we mean by health? Health, health or, health or well-being, the paradox. And then a why, why do we need a whole system approach? Also, I'm going to cover the wider determinants of health and the UK approach. What can we learn from the UK system outside a, a, their wealth? Okay. And also, I'm going to um, touch on health challenges in Sudan from um, internationally published data. And then um, I'm going to pose a very important question. How can we start the change journey? and then a vision um, for um, the future. So <clears throat> the WHO definition of health goes beyond uh, diseases and, and ill health. It encompasses the complete phys physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the, merely the absence of diseases. The fact that you don't have a disease, does it mean you are uh, healthy. Well-being is a wider, a much wider term. It means you are comfortable and happy. You are well connected and you are feeling um, content and valued and appreciated. So, so what we are talking about, not merely absence of diseases, is the contentment, is the happiness, is feeling well, uh, well, well connected. So uh, why, why whole system approach? Why we cannot really influence health and well-being, us as merely doctors or healthcare professionals uh, um, alone? La because health is not a standalone concept. Health, it's, it's, it's um, dependent on Fixed, there are fixed and unchangeable parameters like age, like sex, like genetic fa factors. But these are really minimal. Their impact on health and well-being are really minimal. The wider determinants, what we call them the wider determinants of health are, some. for example, some of them are still health-related. <coughs> like lifestyle factors, smoking, drinking, physical activity, healthy diet and level of stress, social and community connectedness, and also ability to access healthcare services. But alone still, you, they cannot influence the well-being. You need your housing, you need healthy housing, you need education, you need good living and working conditions. People need to be employed and satisfied in their employment. Agriculture and food production in abundance and in safe way. You need good economy. You need to address poverty. You need to have a good water and sanitation system. So these are what is called the wider determinants of health. Without tackling those, you are very unlikely to make a difference to the health and health care. So the UK system, it's not all about money. It's about planning and effective planning. So the principle of UK system, uh, one of the Bible of the principle called the Marmot Report. So and the, the, the value of the UK system is based on reducing inequality. And it is a matter of fairness and justice, al-adala al okay? And also health inequality results from inequality of the wider determinants of health. It's not inequality in being just able to access health care. It's around education, housing, and poverty, and the wider determinants of health. And the most important 
value and principle in the UK system is economic growth is not the most important measure. It's how a, a, a wealth is distributed and how fair the distribution of health, well-being, and, and sustainability. Okay, so, um, and, and this is really, really important because some people might say Sudan is poor, so just give us more money. More money doesn't not, does not mean better health and well-being. Better planning and, and addressing the inequality in addition to adequate resources uh, mean uh, better health and, and, and well-being. So the Marmot report has six priorities. And if you can see, they, they call them across the, the, the life course approach. So the planning, you have to have priorities. And these priorities are, are based on where you can make the maximum impact. For example, you give every child the best start in life. The second one, enable all children and young people to maximize their capabilities. <coughs> and control over their lives. So we are talking about opportunities. We are talking about mental well-being, okay? And create fair employment and good work for all. And ensure healthy standards of living for all and create healthy and sustainable places and communities and in strengthening the role of prevention. So these are the principles underpinning the UK system. It doesn't say, let us have the best ultrasound scan or let us have the latest uh, um, uh, microbiology test or the best looking hospital in the world. Okay? So you, this, is, this is how you address the causes of causes, as we say. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give just a, a quick example from Dudley. It's how we embed the wider determinants of health in health. In the UK now, when public health moved to the local government, and for people who are uh, <coughs> listening to us from abroad, the role of the local government in the UK is they address the transport, the education, they are responsible of housing, and they are responsible of the environment within a small um, area, same like al-hukumat al-mahalliya ayam nimeri zaman, okay? Fa, by, by, and then for each area, they do have something called the health and well-being board, where partners sit around the table, not just the health, the police, the fire, the housing, uh, the, the third sector, the voluntary sector, and they come up with priorities on how they are going to improve the health and well-being in their area. So if you see, for example, in Dudley, just quickly, in terms of children, it's not just immunization or uh, uh, it, it, it's across reducing poverty, safety, educational attainment, and then comes to healthy weight and, 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 and well-being because we have obesity in, in Dudley. So if you, if you take an example of working age group, also we want to have people have healthy life expectancy and address unemployment and address long-term conditions. So this is just to give you a flavor of how the planning is done and how it, it includes the wider uh, determinants of health. If we come to Sudan, these are the latest statistics from the Global Health uh, Observatory. Sudan now has 40 million, over 40 million population. Life expectancy is 62 for males and 66 for females, compared to 90, um, 79, and 83 in the UK. And the probability of dying between 15 to 60 years is uh, male to female, 254 to 196 uh, per thousand population. 41 of the Sudan population uh, um, is under 14 years and only 60% of, of over 65 because of the life expectancy. So you would expect that. And maternal mortality ratio is very, very high. This is the latest statistics, which is 360 compared to around nine in, um, in, in the UK. Um, there's some challenges around the environment in Sudan. Um, if you see in terms of water sanitation, uh, illiteracy rates, and 40% uh, of children at school age are in mainstream education, <coughs> only 40%. And out of 48%, out of 
only 25% go into higher um, education. So really, and, and this, this sum up the inequality in Sudan. You can see different schools and one eminent private school in, in Khartoum. So the, there are inequalities in, um, 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 in Sudan. So the question is, how can we start the change process? <coughs> In the first debate, uh, um, Zanina um, Ahmed Adam said, Min al istiqlal as Sudan didn't go forward. Min, 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 uh, Hukumat Azhari, wa, uh, Ahzab, wa Nimeri, wa Ahzab, wa Baddaka al Inkas. As Sudan either static or going backwards. And I think it is time for us to ask ourselves why. It's not, it's not the time for us to just whinge and say we haven't, we haven't gone, we haven't progressed, and we haven't developed. And I, how I, um, um, in, in my opinion, okay, it, the, the change journey starts by two things. Number one, from within. We have to change ourselves as people, and we have to change our thinking, and we have to have a paradigm shift in culture, in cultural norm, and the second one, we have to have a whole system approach and system leadership. We have to think systems, and we have to think system um, uh, leadership. So from within, I am going to introduce what is called the problem focus or solution focus. We need to be a solution focus. We need to move forward. This is a framework. Uh, and and in, in, in terms of problem focus, talking always about the past, I just said, Minal Istiklal, we didn't move. We need to, instead of talking about the past, we need to talk about the future. What can we do? We are where we are in the here and now. What can we do moving forwards to improve our country? And instead of saying what is wrong, look at what is working. Okay, and um, Mona is going to talk about opportunities and the positives in, uh, in, 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 in Sudan. In terms of blame, this is, this is a problem of al-Ahzab or uh, 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 the problem of hukumat uh, al-Inqaz. Look, let us think about progress. How can we move? We are where we are. Let's move forward. And then instead of control, I want to control everything. Let us think of influence. The difference between control and influence. Control is I tell you what to do. Influence, I take you with me. We all do this together. We all move together. And then the expert know best instead of, yeah, I know it all. It's collaboration because no one person knows everything. In terms of thinking deficit, we haven't got money, we haven't got this, we haven't got that. Let us think, let, let us think assets, let, let us think resources. What have we got in Sudan? We've got ample of water, we've got ample of uh, uh, land that can be cultivated, we've got a, a higher uh, than average education uh, 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 um, attainment in, 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 in Sudan. And instead of complicating things, let us look at simplicity. Let us simplify, and instead of definition, what tandir, let, let us move and take actions. Okay? So that, this, is, I, this is, I think, the fairest step in us trying to move forward and trying, trying to change our culture. The second attribute is system leadership. So system leadership. It's, I'm, I'm really passionate about system leadership, and I think it solves a lot of problems. System leadership is a professional style, and it's not a, a, a set of technical skills, okay? And it is mindset, as I said, professional style, it's relationship, it is enabling behaviors and action. It's looking at the positives, and it is having that uh, 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 positive uh, mind. So. The core values of system leaders, they have an overriding interest in the need of service users. They want to make a difference. They are servant. 
they are absolutely driven by outcomes. And they have the, the driving force comes from their personal commitment, their passion and emotional investment in the work they are doing, and this is what gives them the energy and resilience. To, to, the sti to stick to the work that might take years to show they don't give up. Uh, I'm going to stop here and tell you uh, a story about, I'm going to tell you a story about Muhammad Yunus. I'm not sure if you've heard of Muhammad Yunus. Muhammad Yunus was an economist in Bangladesh and he was working, he was highly accomplished, graduated from a very eminent university. And he was working in Bangladesh. One day in his lunch, in his lunch break, he went and he saw a woman selling, selling bamboo baskets. So, and then very, very well crafted baskets. And he asked her, how much do you sell them for? And then what is your profit? He found she only profit, her profit was two US dollars, but she sells them for 20 US dollars because there is someone who supplies the bamboo for her and they take all the profit. So what did Muhammad Yunus do? He, he had the vision and he had the dream to have a, ba a poverty free Bangladesh. And he went and he asked the uh, uh, banks to give those small uh, families, give those small families um, loans, um, interest-free loans without guarantee. The, the bank laughed at them. They said, no, how can we, get, they, don't know, they don't own anything. How we can give them this without guarantee? He didn't give up. And he went on and on and on, and in the end, he formulated a bank, and his bank now covers 44,000 villages in Bangladesh, and he has 12,000 employees in, in that bank. So this is just an example of people who are driven, who are really passionate, and who wants to make a difference, and they don't give up. So system leadership, it has the mantra, I lose, we win. I lose as an organization, we win as a system, okay? I lose as a person, we win as a country. Uh, um, this is the mantra of um, um, system leadership. It is not forceful, powerful, uncompromising, single-minded, egoistic, or heroic. This is not what would make a difference. Okay, so whole system approach to healthcare planning in Sudan. If we look at the whole system, we need to think about the role of individuals, communities, and the media. What can individuals do? In the UK, we have making every contact count. Two hours course, we teach every frontline worker. They don't have to be healthcare worker to pass evidence bills. Uh, messages, health promotion messages. For example, in the social media in the past, they were talking about mahasin. Mahasin, uh, as, a, as a metaphor, Sudan. Why can't we use mahasin to be, she obviously, in terms of bayat al-shay, in the high captured audience. They, they do have uh, 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 discussions and they, they have uh, facing front why can't you use them to pass the health pro promotion messages? And instead of Nagul Mahasin Kubbi Hargal, Mahasin talk about Al Adrar al Tatkhil. Mahasin talk about the importance of breastfeeding. Utilize those community assets to pass the, uh, the, the uh, health promotion knowledge, the media as well. So we need, and, and, and the, really, the religion leaders. This is, this is really important to enable self-care and to enable people to be able to look after themselves. The second one is the role of government. Okay? The government, they need to, to adopt the holistic planning approach to health. 
Health is not a standalone. They need to in include the transport, the education, and the rest, the police, safety, to be able to uh, influence the wider determinants of health. And the outcome would be they have a multi-sector and health planning across the environment and education and, 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 and across all sectors. Then the, the third, the role of the market forces and economy, okay? We need to improve, as I said in the first debate, one of the problems in Sudan is a private health care. We need to use the, the, the market forces to balance the private health care. And that will be done by improving the quality of the general hospitals in Sudan by more investment, but at the same time, better pla planning and better quality. And also, we need to focus on the prevention and the primary health care. We need to develop the primary health care as a sector in Sudan. And then the role of the legislation and the legal leverage. In, in, in this country, people use the, the legal, legal route to uh, uh, for example, for a smoking cessation. We need to use more of those in terms of uh, speed limits, safety, um, um, smoking cessation. So we need to use law and order they, it, to contribute to the health and environment in Sudan. And the outcome would be prevention-focused system underpinned by improving the wider determinants of health and reducing inequality. Um, I have one slide on market forces and economy, and I, I'm, I'm, my, my uh, colleague Abdurrahman will, will um, expand on this. I think the Sudan has got real uh, opportunity in terms of the health insurance. The health insurance <coughs> are commissioners of health. The term commissioners for people means bulk buying of health care. You buy health care on behalf of your population in bulk. And this is an opportunity because you can dictate what you are buying, you can drive the quality, you can really uh, uh, dictate what I am going to buy. For example, we worked, myself and my colleague, Dr. Huda Hassan, we did, uh, we worked, um, uh, um, we did a leadership uh, training for um, the health insurance uh, uh, managers, and uh, they buy, the, the, the way healthcare is bought is determined by, by the provider, by the consultant. They decide rather than the commissioner or people who are buying the healthcare. For example, antenatal women they have under the insurance, ultrasound scan every month. It doesn't happen in this country unless you need it. In this country, you have only one scan dating, one at 22 and one at 36 weeks. So, not, uh, so unless the, 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 the pregnancy is uh, a complicated uh, pregnancy. So the, there are opportunities to drive quality and also to control prices. They can control the market and control the prices by being able to dictate and, and, uh, the, the, the quality. And, um, and then they can have a shift and focus on prevention. Pay more for prevention, and also, and this will result in improving the population health. So really, my final word is, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destination. I think for us to improve the health care and health care system, the health and health care system in Sudan, we need to have a, a solution-focused mind, we need to change culture, we need to think systems, and we need to uh, uh, empower the population, and we need to really uh, practice system leadership across all levels. You don't have to be Umar al-Bashir to practice system leadership. We can, it has to be done across all, um, all, um, um, across all levels. And thank you very much. شاكر بالعربي او بالتصليح. اوكي سؤال احمد محمد سعد قلت لك السودان يحتاج ممكن انت بترانسليت يو اصلا اوكي. قلت لك السودان يحتاج الى منظومه تعليميه جديده من مرحله الاساس الابتدائيه تشمل المقررات والكتب والمعلمين والبيئه المدرسيه. من المستحيل توقع وجود كوادر صحيه مؤهله وهي من اهم المشاكل التي يعاني منها النظام الصحي الحالي من منظومه تعليميه شامله. Sarah Saadi, senior associate professor with the American Army of the Cross, is very active. But if you can translate, who answer it? 
my, yeah, my understanding is um, the question is the problem in health starts with education and it starts by, by with building uh, uh, future generations who are educated and I, I do totally agree because uh, the addressing the causes of causes as when I mentioned the wider determinants of health education is one of them we know very well from evidence that educated people have higher health care ha have better health and they live longer than non-educated people they have higher income and I do agree for example if you look at Indonesia or a, a or Cuba, the, these, these countries, they are not richer than Sudan, but they focused on education. They paid the, the, the teachers <coughs> the highest salaries. They uh, uh, really, really, and Japan as well, and Korea, there was a, a, a program on the BBC on Korea, how focused they are on, on education attainment. And this is how the, uh, um, uh, the P, the um, uh, uh, civilization move forward. So I do agree. Addressing the question. What is the solution? Your approach is to pass the future. What is the solution? I said. Quickly, I'm going to tell you the I said the solution is having. Uh, 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 um, uh, a solution focused mind. I am not an educationalist, but they are the educationalists. They can come up with a system-wide solution address addressing the whole, uh, uh, um, the whole approach and, and the whole pathway from the start. From a good parenting, from improving the parenting, from improving the bond uh, from the small child. Don't wait for them to reach the uh, 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 school age. So it has to start, but the solution has to come from the educationalist. Okay, second question. I'm afraid the doctor, forgot to mention the 27 years of this government. Al-Ahzab between the Arabi, which is uh, political parties, was only there for a minimum time in the comparison to this current situation. يعني انت قلت the role of government is important لكن the question is that this current government has been very long time so how do you compare them with the political parties in terms of where we are in this يعني current situation in Hells أول حاجة سلامي لتيسير الفكي okay what I said يا تيسير إنه نحنا الكلام اللي تقال المرة اللي فاتت من منذ الاستقلال until now the Sudan didn't go forward Okay, Sudan is the color of So, how many years? 50 years or something? Okay, yeah? 27 years. 20. For the current government. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, half of it, the recur recurrent government, and half of it, the all other governments. Okay? And, and, and in, in terms of adopting a solution focused mind, where we are, where we are, we know, we know the defects, min al ahzab and the defects of this government, okay? The, this, is, this is the elephant in, in the room, okay? But we've been whinging for 50 years or 51 or 52, um, 60, 60 years, yeah, 61 years, whinging in no ihna ma mashina le giddam, whinging in no umar al bashir amal, والصادق المهدي عمل ونيميري وده ما عمل كده وده ما عمل كده Where did that get us? Nowhere So we have to look at now we are where we are This is what we are This is our life, life expectancy This is our challenges How can we move forward تمام أوكي في سؤال Yes go ahead yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes, yeah. Mithar Alazim Kinka says the economic situation, which is very bad, reflects on the healthcare system. So the government must reform the economy first, and then the healthcare will improve accordingly. 
Um, I'm afraid I don't agree. It's not a first and second. Everything, they have to go in parallel, okay? Reforming the economy, yes, it is important, but it, it could be started by better distribution of existing resources and developing partnerships and working in partnerships and utilizing existing resources, and it has to go in tangent with improving health and in improving education, and starting by our assets, starting by what we have, what the positives we have in Sudan, rather than sitting waiting for someone to give us money. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Rahim, but the time, uh, uh, what is your vision for starting, your suggestion for starting point? To wipe everything or to start fresh, ignore the past? You cannot wipe everything. You have yes. to learn. How do we start? Like you, we need policy. Yeah, How? you have to learn from the past, but you don't have to stay in the past. Al past. So we have to move. Yeah, we have to learn from the, the, the history of what went well and what it did, what didn't okay. go well. Fine. To to to. Tamam. I question later, like I have to move it. Lanu is relating. دي دكتور نهى الله خليفة نهى الله خليفة دي في شغالة في دكتورة على Public Health in King عبد العزيز University in Saudi Arabia وهي a very well known person she is the one who founded the nutrition and public health department in the King عبد العزيز University she is a Sudanese والسؤال her question is بالعربي كيف يكون الحل مع طفة البنية التحتية الصحية وغطاء الصحة يندرج في زين أولويات ميزانية الدولة in English how can this be solved? Why the government is putting the, the funding for health is at the bottom of any, if you like, any new mezzanine, which is a, a budget. So the budget in Sudan is treating the health sector with very minimum priority. So how can you, what you have just said can be, can have it? I we'll take into account, this is an experience, public health, yeah, health yeah, 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 I do. I, I do agree you need to, to increase the expenditure in health, but increasing expenditure is not going to solve the problem. You have to have a, a, in a planned way, you have to look at the wider determinants of health. So because health is not a standalone, and if we as a sector came to whoever governing the Sudan, and say, you need to look at the education, but let us start off what we have, let's improve what we have, and then move forward. Okay, this will lead me to, okay, but, but, but by the way, Dr. Muna, you can add to this because you engage in more direct, okay, this is question from, uh, I don't know the name, but Susu Abu Susu, okay? Uh, well, I don't know the name, but it looks like a, a, a very good question, and I will say it in English straight. She, she, or, uh, she or he, I'm sorry if I don't know Susu, it's she or he, but, uh, accept they, my apology. They? The question is, he or she is saying, Salaamu Alaikum, lay su'al haqeera tahaddas ala ta'aleem wa adam tahaddas ala ta'aleem wa adam tawafur al-kawadir fi al-sahha kayfa nagdar nagis al-kalam da ma'a shawahid nubuq atibba'na fi al-mashafi khariji al-Sudan bi al-Khaliq wa ghayraha ma'a wajud mukhtalif al-jinsiyat hada tasawu raysa nigash aw mujadal hatta ala tahkiz zawa istihya the question in English, and this is critical and this is the core stone for the diaspora project we are doing what she's saying here, he or she, please accept my apology. How come we keep nagging, we have uh, lack of uh, caliber, uh, staff, whatever, education system, medical system, and at the same time, our Sudanese doctors are achieving high levels in whatever it is, professional leadership. One example is Dr. Yourself, you are a senior consultant. Muna is the director of public health in Warrington, and, and I always say that about you, and the last time you remember, she was on the front page on the local newspaper about she, how see, there was a story about how she came from Sudan to become the director of public health of Warrington. So this is a very high level job. I don't know how much you get in salary, but this is a very high <laughs> level job. <laughs> but we do have lots of story. Nahla, just five minutes ago, we talked about how she is the one who founded the public health department in King Abdul Aziz, and she became given an award. And there's so many of the doctors. So that's in her question, if, or his question means, it might contradict what you said. Despite all these poor schools, financial situation in Sudan, we are still producing high quality, They're not just normal consultants, high quality people. What can you respond to that? This tells you how resilient we are as, as a nation, okay? okay? And in spite of all the hurdle, 
we still go on and we still produce and we still succeed. And if we go into the solution-focused mind, that means with a very little effort, we can keep the diaspora in or attract them back to Sudan. And with very little effort, we can utilize the positive talent we still have in, um, in Sudan. And it, 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 if, if there is one message from this presentation is, let us change our thinking and let us have a solution-focused mind. Let us stop whinging and let us stop complaining. Let us, let us look at our assets and what, what we have got and then move forward. Okay, I'm going to go to the first Sorry, I'm going to go to the Saudi Arabia. I'm فقبل شوي ده وسام يوسف يعني عشان كمان دي صدق كتير طيب أنا حامشي هديك آخر كوشة أنا بزيل كتير عن وصيله مع دكتور أنا بزيل كتير بايزه which is the generated most of interest أبراهيم الفحل طبعا دكتور أبراهيم الفحل ده is a well known consultant في ال في ال UK و he has the lots of work for the diaspora he run his lots of forum يعني he's a well you know أبراهيم الفحل he sent you this message what is our role as doctors should we wait for the government or should we come out with a white paper, and that's what we're trying to do here, for health, well-researched and evidence-based. Should we set up a think tank for health? Well, Brian Fahad is a well-established consultant. here, very long. He, tried, he done lots of work for the other so I'll read the question. What is our role as doctors? Should we wait for the government, or should we come with a white paper for health, well-researched and evidence-based? Should we set up a think tank for health? Thank you, and I thank Dr. Ibrahim Al-Fahal. The health care planning system I presented, this is an evidence-based one. This is not just, this is an evidence-based. There is clear evidence on the role of communities and the role of government. These are all evidence-based. And, and what, I, what I think is we need, we need, as I said, the solution. We, we, we don't need theory. No, no, Dr. Fahal's question is, we are our role as doctors. You know, there's doctors. You are the doctor. We need what should to we do? Shall we wait for the government or do research, produce white paper the, for policy making? The Which research one? is already there, <coughs> okay. okay? We need to start developing action plans and we start working. We need to start to develop collaboration and partnerships with the government, with the NGOs, with anyone who can help us in achieve what we want to achieve. Okay? And, 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 and I, I'm not a, a very fan of white papers. I am fan of action plans. Action plans. And one, how, how you the doctors do action plans? One, one, 2,500 doctors in this country and more. How, how you can do an action plan? We, we, and we're not, public health, we're very used to action plan is our bread and butter. Okay, but action plan that is achievable, is smart goals. Okay. They are achievable within time frame. And, and, and we need, as I said, we need, to, we need to have the perseverance and we need to have the successful mentality. We need kullana mufrud nakun zay Muhammad Yunis. We need to be, we need to start from somewhere and believe in what we do and believe that it's going to yield a difference and it's going to make a difference. خلاص انا ويل فينيش ويز محمد يونس ده انا محمد يونس طبعا دخل جاي النوبل مشهور رد لك واحد هنا معلق انا كنت اي ويل فولو اب بليز اكسبت باي وي ويل كاري اون ذا كويشن فروم ذا فيسبوك سمير روجر سمي سامي بكارم ويل نون استابليش ان ذا يو اس هي از ليبانيز دياسبورا ان ذا يو اس ويل استابليش كونسلتنس ان ليدر شيب هي هاز ترين جفرمنت اتس ا فيري ويل استابليش بيرسون هي سيت يو ان انسبيريشنال ستوري اوف محمد يونس سو تو فينيش ويز از and his in initiative to launch a binary concept of microfinancing banking in Bangladesh. So we will finish with that one.